Hello, welcome to another episode of The Excellent Way. I am Marka. And I am Brandon, aka Coach B. And we're here today to talk about the five roots of an excellent life. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to go f over this in five different episodes, but it's eat, think, um, train, sleep, and connect. Not in any particular order, obviously, <laughs> just the order I can remember it in. So today I think we're going to talk about eat and um, why this would be a root. So root is like the foundation, right? Mm -hmm. So you need these foundations in your life to um, live an excellent life. And so um, eating is definitely one of those. Yeah. So, we, I mean, the idea behind it calling, calling them roots, right, is... is to grow a flourishing life, right? So you have that eat, sleep, train, think, connect. <laughs> uh, that's the way you go through them. And, um, and eat is, is the first one you go through because it is super essential. Mm -hmm. um, and, and sleep is one that's, that's in there that most people don't think about. Training, we all think about training, gotta get to the gym, gotta get to the gym. Um, and those three kind of lump together and the think and connect pieces are a part of that and they influence the other three but eating is a really controversial topic for people it's you know everybody's got their own opinion about how things work and what is you know what's important what's not and so what we want to do is establish the things not saying that this that or the other isn't important right but we want to talk about the things that actually move the needle the most all the way up to the things that they can move the needle but they're not going to make as big an impact as some of the things that we'll talk about first right so that, that that's the idea behind this is it's it's you know i started as a trainer 15 years ago and over the years the more i've learned about it the more i've learned like if you can step through this process of controlling your food in, in kind of in this direction, um, you build long-term success. Right. You know, losing the weight is cool, um, but what's better is losing the weight and then staying healthy for the rest of your life. Yes. And so we've, uh, we've kind of come up with a process to do that really, really well. And it's not like um, you're someone that has always had control of this or I obviously don't have control of this right now but this is coming from experience on both ends like yeah. you were at your highest weight you were at what two, almost 260 260 um if you guys want to see a picture of it he was brandon was actually highlighted in, on social media this week for our gym and you shared your before picture and then after picture when you were your leanest when you were training for an ultra beast for the spartan race um and so, like, this isn't something that, like, we're talking about and, and saying and haven't actually tried to put into practice or haven't put into practice and been successful with. Right. And for me, like, I am still in the midst of learning this and, and working on it and trying mm -hmm. to do good with it. So just want to kind of put that out there to people that don't know us. Like, this is where we're coming from. So Yeah, this comes from... This comes from an educational background, and this is this is what my degree is in: exercise yep. science, nutrition. That's what my degree is in. I have certifications, like right. all of the educationally. Um, from a professional standpoint, this is literally what I've been doing for a living for the past. Uh, I mean, I started as a trainer, but I was doing it just training people, and then it became my living in 2007. Is when I officially started. Like this is what I do now. Yeah. Um, and then uh, it's also, like you said, experiential. Like I was really fit. I was an athlete. And then I hit college and I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I got a job as a trainer and running a gym, I was like, well, maybe I should look the part. Right. And so that's, it's all of this, all of that information goes into this. It's like what I, it's what I know from an educational standpoint. It's my own personal experience and my professional experience working with hundreds and hundreds of people trying to help them figure this out. Right. So. Yeah, yeah, So that's important to kind of mention. So uh, Brandon actually took the time and he has put together 
uh, a pyramid. So as we talk about this, I want you guys to think of a pyramid. And at the bottom of the pyramid, again, it's another foundational thing. If you're just someone that has no idea about nutrition at all, this is where you would want to start. So it's calories, so how many calories you're eating, and hydration or water yeah. specifically. So. Um. So it's actually, so, and this is something that's shifted actually since I met, kind of created this, and so it's just, I have to update it, but um, it's not even necessarily tracking your calories more as much as it is just start paying attention to your food. Like one of the very first steps that I want people to take, don't change anything. Get a journal, get an app, and just start writing down what you put in your face. That's right. my rule. If it goes in your face, it goes in the journal. Or right. And so like some people like the app stuff. There's My Fitness Pal and Noom and and a whole host of other ones. Um, and they're all really great. And the, the apps are cool because it will track your calories and your macronutrients and your micronutrients yeah. and all of that stuff. And you can get super detailed. But what most people need when they first first start is they don't need all that information. What they need to do is they need to actually see this is what I'm eating or not eating throughout the course of a day. And so sometimes the best thing to do is just go get a dollar notebook from Walmart and literally just write it down. You don't, if you have calorie counts and all that stuff like that, you can write that stuff down too. But it's more like on a day-to-day -day basis getting people to see like when we have the conversation about nutrition, well, I feel like I eat pretty well. Okay, well, what's pretty well look like? What do you eat? Well, I, I mean, I, I kind of eat this way for breakfast and this way for lunch and this way for dinner. Okay, but what are you doing in between? Are you snacking in between? Well, sometimes I think, but not, I mean, you know, that, that conversation becomes like this, I think I know what's going on. We need to stop thinking we know what's going on. We actually need to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So start tracking that. And a lot of times what you find is like, okay, there's probably a handful of things that you're doing really well, you know, like you're making good choices here, good choices there. But then it's the, you know, you walk by the secretary's desk and they've got candy. And so you grab that handful of M&Ms or that couple of little like Hershey's Kisses or whatever. Or, you know, um, as you're cleaning up dinner and your kids have left, you know, mac and cheese on the plate and you finish off the mac and cheese for them. And if you've got kids, you have done that. Don't judge me. <laughs> All right. And it's, it's, it's little stuff like that that you don't think about. You don't consider as, well, that's what I ate. Well, that's the thing. You did eat it. It was just, it, in your mind, it was an insignificant amount. But that, those things start to accumulate over time. Right. And so then that becomes the struggle. So then, okay, what, how, do I take, how do I take control of that? Well, you take control of that by following the rule of, if it goes in your face, it goes in the journal. End of list. Yeah. And you can't hold it back because you think like, well, if I put it in the journal, somebody's going to yell at me about it. No, 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 no. This is information. You need to know what you're putting in your body. And then you say, you know, the other part of this is hydration. What are you drinking through the day? Are you drinking latte after latte after latte and then a frappuccino and then a latte and then a frappuccino and then a cup of coffee? Or are you drinking like coffee and then Gatorade and then coffee and then a monster? Or, or are you Red drinking Bowl? coffee and then nothing until dinner? Right. And that's the a other. Lot of people, yeah. We're finding that out too. Like people have their morning, like maybe they only have a cup of coffee or they have a latte and then they drink nothing until dinner. Yeah. And they can't figure out why they always have headaches. You know, or they can't feel it, figure out why they're so groggy or, or, or sluggish it's because you're so dehydrated that your brain can't function the way it needs to happen. And so you, when you're tracking your water, that's something you do have to kind of start track, keeping track of is um, how many ounces of just water are you drinking a day? Are you drinking, are you drinking any? Mm -hmm. And we find a lot of times people really, if they're, if they're drinking any water, maybe 20 ounces, which is nowhere near enough. So that's kind of the, 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 the step one. Just be aware of what you put in your body. And a lot of times that's enough to get, like, that's the wake up call. Like, oh, maybe I should start making better decisions. Maybe I should skip that 
trip by the secretary's desk, or if I do go by there just to say hi, don't grab the M&Ms on the desk. Right. You know, or whatever that looks like. Yeah. So that's kind of step one. Cool. So um, step one, I've done that for a while, started making some changes, um, saw a little bit of change in my energy whatsoever, uh, maybe my weight. Um, so step two, quality of food. Yeah. So a lot of times people talk about why don't you track calories first? Isn't Because weight loss is, from the bottom line, weight loss is calories in, calories out. Mm -hmm. Period. You can't refute that math. It is very, very true. However, food quality tends to make a bigger overall difference than just pure calorie tracking. And here's why. If I just take the time to choose quality whole foods over processed foods, the calorie equation kind of takes care of itself, right? Eating a um, hundred calories of rice, that's like a quarter cup of rice. It's not very much. Eating a hundred calories of veggies is pretty tough to do sometimes, you know? And so why does that make a difference? Well, a quarter cup of rice is not very much volume. A quarter cup of, or a hundred calories of vegetables is way more than a quarter cup. That's a lot of food volume. So now I've had all that food volume, I feel fuller faster, so I now will eat less calories. Now I use rice, it's a little bit healthier example, but really what it is is getting people away from the processed stuff, mm -hmm. right? They're going to the hundred calorie snack bar, right? Like this is, this is quote unquote healthy because it's only 100 calories, which is great, except for the actual volume that you've just ingested is very small. So even though you've had 100 calories, you haven't hit that point of like being satisfied. And so now you, you're, you're still quote unquote hungry. Whereas if I gave you 100 calories of vegetables, you'd eat that 100 calories and you would, you would feel fuller for longer, which means over the course of a day, you're gonna eat less food, which means the calories kind of take care of themselves. And then you have the aspect of, if I'm eating whole foods, if I'm eating lean meats, vegetables, nuts and seeds, fruits, and that's what my diet consists of, I'm just gonna feel better because I'm not eating the processed food-like product, I'm eating actual food. And so I just feel better. Right. So a lot of the, it, it, it checks a lot more boxes. So uh, give people some examples of common processed food-like products that we eat a lot of that maybe we should try and cut back on. Um, well, I mean, really it comes down to like, uh, it's this, it's, it really, it's the snacky stuff. Right? It's the stuff that we get marketed to that it's healthy, but it's really not that healthy, right? It's like um, uh, the organic, you know, free range, whatever, like cookies or brownies. Well, it's organic, so it's healthy, right? Dude, it's still a cookie. It's still a brownie. It doesn't matter if it's organic or not. In fact, organic really has to do more with like farming practices and it really doesn't, again, it goes back to how much impact does it make? Look, I would rather you eat an apple over organic cookies. Like, it, the organic cookies are still cookies. Right. Right? Um, the the, health, the quote unquote healthy protein bars, pick one. Well, They're not necessarily bad for you, but that's, it's a food-like product. We call it food because we eat it and we get calories from it. Or white bread versus wheat bread. But it's not gonna make a difference. Okay. But like, white bread versus wheat bread doesn't really make all that much difference. Now people are gonna fight me on that and be like, well, what about the glycemic index, man? And like all this, it really doesn't make that much of a difference, right? If I eat a slice of bread, if I have a choice between eating a slice of bread or half an apple, and I keep using an apple because it's something that pretty much all people will eat, right? If I choose a slice of bread or half an apple, 
they're about the same calorie load, but the apple is gonna help me feel fuller for longer than that slice of bread will, period. Like that's just, that's just reality. And so the first step in cleaning up your diet, losing weight, feeling better, is not counting calories. It's choose whole foods and the calories take care of themselves. Okay, okay so um, now I'm eating really great. What's a great way to learn what whole foods are? Right, so there's two places I direct people for this. Yeah. Um, one we've been doing for a long time, the other one is pretty new. Um, it's a little less restrictive, so I feel like it might be a better first step for a lot of people, um, which is called the 800 gram challenge. And you can just Google that. It was uh, developed by a woman named E.C. Sinkowski. She's actually, she actually lives here in Boulder. She runs Optimize Me Nutrition. She's an amazing nutrition coach. Um, she started it because she really is a believer in just, just eat whole food, eat real food. So the challenge is eat 800 grams by weight of plant life. Okay, so that's fruits and vegetables. That is not grains, not nuts and seeds, although those are good for you. It is like, and it can't be processed. So something like, like a Lara bar is dates and nuts and maybe some fruit or like they have some that have chocolate chips in them now or whatever, right? It's dates, but it doesn't count because it's been processed, right? And every step in that process just kind of takes us away from the whole food. So it needs to be something out of the produce department. Basically, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so that's a great place to start. So you can look that up. The other place that we go, and it's something that we're going to do here in the gym next week, is the Whole30. The Whole30 is it's very stringent for 30 days. But during that 30 days, you really get to an idea of this is how my body reacts to certain foods. Um, and it pulls me out of the rut of this is what I do day in and day out to feed myself because now that quote unquote healthy bar that you thought was really healthy, you can't have during the whole 30 at all. During the 800 gram challenge, as long as you hit your 800 grams, you can eat whatever else you want. During the whole 30, there's a box you have to stay in. And so it's, it's very stringent, but it teaches the lesson of eat real food very well. So those are two good ones to look up if that's where you're at, how, struggling with like quality of food. If, you do, if you're really not sure what is actually healthy, those are the two places I would go. Yeah, and there's tons of stuff out there, just look them mm -hmm. up. Okay, so I'm doing really good. I did the Whole30, had great success, um, but I want, this is where I'm at. I wanna go a step further. Mm -hmm. What do I do now? So now you have to start thinking about the quantity of food. Now this is where calories start to matter. Okay, um, this is, okay, I've cleaned up my diet, I'm feeling really good, but I'm still maybe not losing the weight or losing the weight as fast as I'd like to. All right, we really now need to dial in how much you're eating. Because even if you're eating whole foods all the time, it's still, like things like nuts and seeds, although they're really good for you, it's really easy to overeat them. Oh yeah. Like you go buy, like somebody's got that bowl of mixed nuts, it's easy to just grab a handful and eat that handful of nuts. A handful of nuts can sometimes be like a thousand to fifteen hundred calories, depending. I mean, I've got kind of a bigger hand, but like that's that's a lot of calories. Right. So now we have to start controlling quantity, right? We did. We're now quality is good. We got to start controlling quantity, and so you got to start tracking calories, and that's where an app can be very helpful just start tracking like, okay, this is how I'm eating. Let's get an idea of where my calories are at. There's a ton of calculators out there on the, on the internet. You can go and get like an in-body done and it'll tell you how many calories per day you should be eating, things like that. And so you can get an idea of what that looks like so that you can set your calories where you need them for what your goals are. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to maintain? Okay, you need to eat this many calories. Are you trying to lose weight? Okay, we need to create a calorie deficit. Are you trying to gain weight? Okay, well let's, we need to create a calorie surplus. So that gives you an idea of where to go. Um, the thing about this is, this is where you start understanding just how carbohydrate bias we as Americans are. The standard American diet is between 60 and 70% carbohydrate, which is way too much, right? We see professional CrossFit athletes who top out at 50% carbohydrate. 
But me, as a person who works out an hour a day and then sits at a desk for eight to 10 and then sits in my car on the way to and from work and then goes home and sits on the couch for another hour or two before I go to bed. I'm not, I'm not as active as they are, but I'm eating 70% carbohydrate. That's too much. We need to bring that down. So the best way to learn that, and this is our recommendation, is learn the zone. It's called the zone diet. It's been around since the 70s. Just by rebalancing your macronutrients, so I'll talk about that in a second, to what the zone recommends, you start to see really significant changes in how your body processes food and like energy levels and how quickly your, your body will lose weight and things like that because it takes that carbohydrate level from 60 to 70% down to like 40%. And um, now that means though that you can't eat those really calorie dense foods like breads and rices and pastas because it's a lot of carbohydrates in a very small amount. Mm. Um, and so like the reason that's important is because you get calories from carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. If you hit your calorie number, if you hit your percentage numbers, which the zone says it should be 40% carbohydrate, 30% protein, 30% fat, which will have gram, like amount of grams per day associated with that. If you hit those numbers, you'll hit your calorie count. So it's, it, it's a little bit easier to go, okay, I'm gonna just hit these three numbers and my calories will be on point, right? Sometimes it's like, okay, I'm gonna eat 1300 calories a day. Cool, but you ate, of that 1300, you had 900 calories from carbohydrates. Like your body needs a certain level of fats and a certain level of proteins to process and work the way it needs to work. Because, and this is the thing that makes people mad, there is no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. It doesn't exist. There are essential fatty acids, meaning we have to ingest them for our body to use them. We can't create them. There are essential amino acids, which are the building, bro building blocks of proteins. We have to, they're essential because we have to eat them. We can't produce them on our own. And so like your body can create its own carbohydrate. It's part of the job of your liver, but it can't create it's a, it, the essential fatty acids. It can't create the essential amino acids. So you have to ingest them. Well, if you're eating 70% of your diet of carbohydrate, there's not a lot of room to get those other two things in. Mm -hmm. So we've got to flip that over. And what we see people when they rebalance their diet like this is we see like hormone levels level out. Um, we see, uh, um, you know, blood sugar levels level out and a whole host of other really great health benefits coming from that. All right. So. Um, and then the rest of our pyramid has to do with timing and supplements. Yeah. Um, but this isn't something that like you recommend people to worry about right away? No, um, these are the two things that people try to do first and it's completely backwards. Like we've all, we've all done the thing where we went and bought the fat loss pill, or bought the fat loss shake or the, you know, like tea, the, coffee. The, 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 the skinny tea or the skinny coffee or whatever that is. Like we've all gone out and bought that product because it, 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 promises to help us lose weight because it'll increase our metabolic rate or whatever that looks like. And although those products do in some cases work, the amount that it moves the needle is very small compared to those first three steps. It's just, it's, it's minuscule. And supplements are meant to supplement an already very good controlled diet. So if your diet is garbage and you're gonna go take supplements, it's really not gonna do anything for you. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, you have to do those, the first steps first. That's why we're, they're stacked this way. Nutrient timing and supplements go kind of hand in hand because they're more pushed towards performance for the most part. Like if I'm, a, if I'm gonna be a competitive athlete, I have to know, I have to have scheduled my meals. Right? I'm gonna get up and eat at this time, and I'm gonna eat at this interval before and after a workout. I'm gonna eat at this interval right before I go to bed, things like that, right? With the timing stuff, you get people who like, well, 
don't eat after seven o'clock. Okay, why? A calorie is still a calorie. It doesn't matter when you eat it. And then you get in the argument, well, your metabolic rate slows down at night. Different, th like, I get that, that's great. But if you stop eating at seven o'clock, it doesn't matter if you've still eaten, you know, a thousand more calories than you should have eaten in the day, right? And that's typically what happens is people will be like, well, I need to, I stop eating at seven o'clock so I don't do the late night snacking. Great, but what I see people do is they just get that late night snack in before seven o'clock. Right. So they just squeeze it in under the gun, which is not helpful. Um, you know, the other part of nutrient timing is like one of the big things right now is intermittent fasting. And that's, that's great, and it can be helpful in certain situations, um, and it's useful in a therapeutic form, like to help people who really are struggling with things like insulin sensitivity and things like that. It's a great tool, but it's not the thing that's gonna move the needle the most. And where people typically start trying to change their diet is they go, well, I'm gonna change when I eat, right? Or I'm just gonna take this supplement. And those are two things that can be helpful, but it's not going to move the needle the way you want it to, right. you know, and that's, those are two things too, nutrient timing, food timing, and supplements where those are going to work better on an individual basis where you're working with a trainer who's really knowledgeable or a nutritionist who's really knowledgeable or a dietitian, right? Um, the person selling you the supplements is not always the best person to talk to about what you should be taking and how you should take it. it. Most of the time because they're just following a recommendation from a company trying to sell you a supplement. They're not looking at the whole of your diet, the whole of your day, the whole of your lifestyle and trying to really actually help you build long-term success. They're just trying to get you to take the supplement. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, it's just not ideal for every single person. And so, if you take the time to do the first steps first, those last two pieces can be helpful if you're stuck. Right. But that's not where you start. Okay. So let's go over this. So first things first, journal what you're putting in your mouth. Yep. And be honest with yourself. Yeah. Because it's not like for shaming or anything. It's just for information. It's just for the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And include your hydration. Like what, what are you drinking? And... Are you drinking water? Yeah. And that's why I made the rule for that. If it goes in your face, it goes in the journal, journal. whether it's food or liquid. Yeah. Um, once you've kind of figured that out, you'll innately probably make changes. So then mm -hmm. we're going to go to food quality. Mm -hmm. And if you're not sure what to do there, you can do the 800 gram challenge or Whole30. Yep. Great places to teach you food quality. Then after that, it's the zone diet or at least looking at your macros and figuring out where you stand yeah. and what you're eating. And when it comes to that, like figuring out your macronutrients and, and understanding what that is, again, it goes back to talk to a knowledgeable, experienced trainer, talk to a knowledgeable, experienced nutritionist or dietitian. Those are the two places you want to go to start understanding what that actually is. Yeah. Please don't go out and like Google this stuff because you're going to get across a million different opinions on how to do your macros and what they are and what counts and what doesn't count. And then you're gonna be confused and you're not gonna do anything. Yeah. So talk to somebody that you trust and the internet isn't always a place to trust. <laughs> Good. Um, so uh, that's kind of the end of the first root of an excellent life is controlling our eating and figuring out what we're doing there. Um, if you guys have questions or anything about that, I mean, yeah. Brandon's always willing to answer those, help you through that, um, whatever. He's great at it. He's been, do like he said, he's been doing this for a really long time. So definitely reach out to him. You can reach out to us on social media or um, through our email, which is team at crossfitelm.com. Mm -hmm. And if you are a part of our gym, we're headed into the whole 30 on March 16th and we're doing it as a group, so it's always kind of better to do things together, right? So you get that support and things like that. So uh, just let us know. Yes, I'm in. Let's do this for 30 days.
Cool. So yeah. All right. All right, guys. Well, have a good day. Thanks, guys.